doing good. How are you? Oh, hi. Oh, hi. that's why. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Coach, if you could begin with an opening statement on the win. Uh, I mean, obviously, uh, I thought Ed's team did a fantastic job, and we battled with them all season long. But I, I couldn't be more proud of my team tonight and uh, how they performed. Questions for Coach or the student athletes. Crystal, for you, with, uh, coming off this game, 16 points, nine rebounds, and best two games, you only had one point combined. Just what were you seeing out there? I mean, it was a pretty exciting game. Um, they were sagging off me since the beginning, so I like, um, I just took the, the shots that they gave me. I just basically took what the defense gave me, and luckily it was um, in a positive way. So um, I don't know, it was just exciting. Um, so now on to the next game. Um, beat Delaware tomorrow. That's basically always on my mind. Angie, you said you tie another career high with 17 points again uh, against William and Mary. Uh, they were keying in on you, but you were still able to make your shots. What, do you, what did you see out there? Um, I guess my teammates really were the ones that told me that they were, uh, I guess, tripling me and doubling me. So um, once I started to pass it back out and they figured out that we can shoot and score from the guards, uh, the guards, I guess, kind of trusted me to um, pass it back in and score. Uh, just staying with the, the point about uh, they went small. Yeah, um, yeah. Were you, uh, you know, I guess first Angie and then Coach, if you could talk about that a little bit too. Mm -hmm. Were you expecting that? And then how, and how did your teammates, and Crystal, I thought you did a good job of noticing that at times and just sort of got it inside to her. But uh, were you uh, anticipating that? Um, oh. um, no, I thought that they were going to do kind of like a form one most of the time, so I guess we were kind of surprised that they went small, but I feel like it didn't really phase us in the end. I mean, if they went small, we were just going to dominate inside, whether it be me, ELO, DTP, so. Well, and, and it, got, it got a little tricky because obviously E was having a, a great game too, and when they, you know, weren't playing Abby, you know, as much, and then you've got, Angie does a great job of guarding 11, and, and E can guard smaller folks, absolutely no doubt, but you know, you just don't want to put her at a disadvantage. And so it was, it, that one was a little bit tricky, but I thought obviously Ajene Durant did a phenomenal job for us. Sid Epps came and gave us good minutes and got some rebounds. I mean, those are the things that, you know, you need when, you know, they throw a different wrench. And coach, just speaking on Ajene even more, right. she has 10 in the second half, yeah. even has four fouls, but she was still able to find a way to be able to contribute for you guys. Well, how about I, I played her with three. How, how many freshmen do you go you're, you're going to stay in? Really, I mean, that obviously you guys, you know, you've watched her all season long, so you, you know how consistent she is, how heady she is. She's not going to make dumb fouls. That's why, you, really, she she's so cerebral to the game. When she does, like, got one of the last fouls, she, you go back to the film, she's usually on point. It's usually not there. Um, very cerebral, very smart player, um, way above her years. And, uh, and to knock those free throws down, down the stretch, her and Angie both, you know, just big stuff, big time stuff. That's why she was second team all CAA and rookie of the year. And I think um, both of these guys proved so I'll just let their actions speak much more. And you mentioned free throws, and it was something in the second half that your team improved upon. How important is that going in against the University of Delaware and the rest of the tournament? Say that one more time, because I was uh, <laughs> still looking at you. You knew where I was driving at, so go ahead. Go ahead. Um, the free throws in the second half, your team hit more yeah. than in the first half. It improved a lot in terms of percentage. How important is that going up against Delaware and further in the tournament? Well, you know, I would love for them to answer it because we shoot free throws all the time. So mechanically, there's nothing I can go any further. It's really between those ears and the seven that we missed in the first half. I didn't even talk about it. Um, that's two things I don't talk about. I don't talk about missed shots. I don't talk about missed free throws because you don't need to get any further in their heads. So I, they need to answer that, and then I would like to know too. So that would be really good for tomorrow, um, tomorrow's game. Oh. <laughs> no, I think just from seeing other games like on TV and stuff like that, free throws are so important. Um, That's a very good point. I feel like they can make or break a game, especially when <coughs> the refs are calling the game and stuff like that. So <coughs> I me, felt Angela. like <clears throat> when the refs are calling the fouls in the second half that we just felt like we just needed to make them, especially so we can have a nice good stretch in the end. Hey, Krista, you um, – oh, hey. You really got William and Mary out of sync early offensively. Can you talk about how you did that? Because if this is a team, if they get to shoot the threes, yeah. you've seen what they can do. Well, we just kind of – we had a really long journey down in Wilmington, and uh, the coaching staff and I, uh, I think we kind of – I think when we all woke up on uh, – what day was it? <laughs> we were there so many days. Thursday morning. Uh, first thing I woke up, I was like, 
we just need to continue to be the aggressor and press and be more aggressive. I mean that you know and and I you know so we we really kind of made this decision um, you know a week or so ago that you know we're not and we don't ever back into anything anyway. But you know we didn't we just kind of didn't finish our last two games as strong and. Um, you know, I, and we just were the aggressor tonight, and I think that was the reason why we kind of came at them, kind of gave them a piece of their own medicine, you know, because they press uh, for 40 minutes. So uh, we're talented enough to do that, um, and I think it helped us. I think it really helped us, and it helped us kind of be ready from the jump. It was really more just even just about us, and then because we, we know we're good at it, but it was about us for us to get going right from the start. Time for one more question. I got to be the one that asked it, but Coach Delaware's up next. We know the recent history with the program between you two guys. What's the key tomorrow? What kind of team is Delaware? What are you, what are you expecting to see uh, tomorrow? Well, it's going to be obviously an extremely aggressive game, um, notably from the two that we played. Uh, you know, they try to make you play ugly. You know, we're playing zone all the time, and they want to keep it low scoring. And so we're just going to not let that happen. Right, thank Mel you. had a question, so we can't yeah. leave this place We're without Mel giving a question. Yeah. Especially that he's falling asleep with me right here. So go, come on, Mel. Come on, Mel. <laughs> oh, ah. Uh. It was? Who are you rooting for tomorrow, Mel? Let's <laughs> spin you on the spot. Let's spin you on the spot. Uh, yeah, you know, not taking them lightly, not being comical here. We just got to put our heads together tonight and then just get on the floor and take care of business tomorrow. So talk is cheap. That's really the big statement on that one. Thank you. Can I take this? That is all you.